the other actually is about um, the way society, we as a people, are otherizing so many different groups of people. So the concentric circles that should be uh, are breaking up into smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter circles with the overlaps kind of disappearing and moving further apart. Each of these circles becoming more and more watertight. So basically that's why I just, you know, just called it something as straightforward as the other because the otherization of communities, people. Um, well, one of the themes that is strong in this, I think, is disability. Um, because I find that kids generally uh, would like to be good and kind and they think that they are being good and kind by leaving a person with disability alone. But not realizing that that is also a form of otherization and pushing the person to the brink of your um, sight. Uh, so I had in fact the experience of a, a young boy when I asked him to come and talk to the majority of kids in the class who said oh, they felt that they were being inclusive. But when I called the guy with uh, disability to come up and talk and he says I'm never included in a basketball game. He was severely physically disabled but he wanted to play basketball and why not? You know and how it was assumed that a child who has that is not even going to think of it. So after that, I did notice that they were, in fact, had adapted their game of uh, basketball to include him. You know? uh, so that is a theme that's been important, actually, in my other writing as well. Um, the other also talks about sexuality. There's a coming out story. Um, and also about sexual assault. Uh, there are two stories actually which deal with that kind of assault on women. And actually when I started writing this book a year or more ago, um, Me Too hadn't yet started. And I was worrying whether I was going too far. Today when the book comes out, it's like bang smack in the middle of something that all young people are talking about, boys and girls, and really calibrating what's acceptable and not acceptable. <laughs> young people are doing it much more consciously. Older people are, see, I mean, it's, it's so ingrained in older men that they don't as yet even recognize that this was maybe not all right as a comment but younger people are much more aware. So I think the other has become much more relevant and I hope uh, that schools are going to realize that relevance, realize that that's what kids are talking about and bring it into schools as well. Um, kind of nebulous, I don't know whether I haven't found a definition which fits everything that I would like to fit into the definition. Um, I think young adult literature almost always has young adult or young protagonists who drive the story. That's one. But does that mean that all books with young adult, with that age group, is Kaitran a young adult? Probably not, but who knows. Uh, it's very new, so I think it's still finding its boundaries, whether there should be boundaries or not. Maybe there shouldn't be. Uh, so what are the taboos? I think none. Um, the taboo that I put upon myself as a young adult writer, that age, that age of 
adolescence is a dark time mm. and you are sometimes feeling that there's uh, there's nothing beyond this darkness so I always try and end my story on an upswing with some hope with a feeling that there is the possibility at least of light at the end of a very dark tunnel uh, so there is a story in the other uh, on rape and the aftermath of rape and it also looks at when there is a crime like rape committed it's not one person who is raped it's a family it's friends it's a school it's a teacher you know everybody is impacted by this crime and how each one is dealing with it and I've sort of given it given different voices so <clears throat> but the title of the story is learning to love again which starts off saying yes this horrible thing happened but you're going to survive and that to me is the one taboo that I put upon myself Um, I don't think I find any of them difficult to do in terms of the craft of it um, and each story finds its level. I don't necessarily decide that this is the age group I'm going to target. Each story finds that. Uh, Wingless I thought was going to be for older. It in fact turned out to be another book. Um, <clears throat> But I really enjoy the interactions I have with readers um, and I love the young adult uh, responses, the questions, because with the younger books, it remains a book, you know, they've heard a story. With the young adult, it becomes their lives and windows into their lives, their issues. And I love that. Um, that transition into life uh, that's kind of informs my writing tells me I'm on a right right path more than right path an important path um, sometimes the kind of responses that young people have are far more mature than the responses of adults um, far wiser Adults will always um, worry about something that I've said. I mean, quite simply, there's a story that I was telling about a lie. And in the middle of it, this teacher sent me a note saying, at the end, please clarify that a lie is a bad thing. <laughs> of course, I'm not saying, kids, you've got to start lying now. No, I'm, I'm obviously not going to do that. Kids don't need to ask that question, you know. So we, I think as adults, as teachers, we get over anxious about it. Uh, so favorite, I love writing for little kids. Um, I need to write those because I actually inhabit the skin of my character. I become the character. I inhabit that alternate universe. And when I'm writing something that dark and that difficult, um, I become dark and difficult myself. So it's like a pressure cooker release, you know, that I need that to, when I'm writing for, you know, for younger kids. So I often write a book for young adults and a book for kids at the same time. What I love is how different young people like a different story, you know. Their favorite uh, is completely different from somebody else's. And I think that comes out of what has been their experience in their young lives. Uh, so I think it depends on where you are, which is why I think that this is a book not to read cover to cover but to come upon a story uh, as you want, as you wish. Uh, one young girl, a young girl said to me, she said, I've read your stories as I've grown up 
and I can't imagine that you are the same person who would write, let's say, the bear book, a very naughty bear, and the same person who would write the other. Um, how do you get from that to that? You know, again, such a such an amazing question. No adult has thought to write to ask it. Um, I think the takeaway today is going to be strongly about learning to love again and the inner circle, outer circle, which are both step up, speak out those stories. Um, in the current Me Too atmosphere, which we are all living moment to moment, um, I think this is going to be uh, the one which which kids, you know, which strike a chord. Well, I really urge parents and teachers and librarians, schools, to use this book. Um, not to feel over anxious about some of the subjects. I know that sometimes there's a fear of how adults are going to react or parents are going to react if this school this if a school actually recommends this but kids are talking about these subjects already so stories are actually a great way to talk about those subjects which are difficult for an adult to broach uh, and it's a it's a very safe space i found i found let's say in a story about domestic violence in another book uh, at the end of the telling of that story a girl came and said is it a true story and I said what do you think and she said definitely true I said how can you say with so much surety and she said because it happens in my house and many others then talked about their knowledge and awareness and witness to domestic violence in their whatever own homes. Now, had you asked a classroom of kids, do you know about domestic violence? They would have said yes, in that paper or in that, you know. Many of the kids would have said it's something which happens in villages because it comes in sort of in this safe space of fiction, you can talk about your reality. And therefore, it's really important that these subjects, which they are already talking about with each other, they talk about with you, a caring adult. Because um, you are going to be, perhaps, hopefully, in a position to give them the tools to deal. Um, and without you, they may not have it. So it's really important. I really urge schools not to feel scared by the book by the stories. I know in the past, violence has been easy for schools to talk about. So I have a book with where a young child is responsible for multiple deaths and his own. That's been all right. It's sexual connotations that scare parents and teachers more. Don't let it scare you. Now is not the time to be frightened of it. Um, I think these are little windows into your child's lives. Don't pull down the shutters, open the window, get in there, talk to them. I'm going to read a little extract from the story Inner Circle, Outer Circle from the book The Other, published by Speaking Tiger. The circle turns and tightens and we all stand watching. Our blood runs cold, freezing. It boils, thumping in our ears, and we all stand watching. Our hands clench into fists, but our feet grow solid roots, and we stand here, watching. The screams go on, the cries for help, but we just stood there, watching. They came out of nowhere, I think. At least it was nowhere for me. I was busy looking down, not meeting any eyes. 
holding my books across my chest, for books were my weapon of choice, and I was a warrior. But they caught her, not bothering about the other people crowding around. They were confident that this was a crowd of impotence, a crowd of inaction. Not that there was anything special about this crowd. It was a crowd pretty much like any other in this city, in this country. They knew no one was going to step forward to help. And no one did. Not one of us. Us. Yes. Me. Mm -hmm.